This the Iranian One story has been debunked countless times. It is nothing but a, a you know, a false charge that uh, the Trump administration is uh, trying to drum up in order to avoid uh, attention being directed at them. This is such an abuse of power, and it goes right at the rule of law. If they send a signal that we're going to be like some dictatorship, some authoritarian regime where political opponents are going to be unfairly, uh, fraudulently investigated, uh, that rips at the fabric of the uh, contract we have, that we can trust our justice system. Really? Hillary talking about the rule of law and the possibility of a special counsel to investigate her role in that whole corrupt Uranium One deal? She's obviously getting nervous here with more reaction. Author of the best-selling book, Clinton Cash. Really, we're going to get a lecture on the rule of law. You know, I, I watch people now assail you. Even the never Trump crowd is now trying to come to the defense, I noticed, of Hillary Clinton. I want to give you a chance to respond and explain to people all of the connections here. I'll hand it to you. Well, thanks, Sean. Um, look, um, this is a story that begins in 2005. Uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton helped Frank Justra, a Canadian investor, get very, very rich uranium deposits in Kazakhstan from the Kazakh government. And we now have a video deposition from the Kazakh um, uranium minister at the time going into detail about how they were extorted by then-Senator Hillary Clinton to grant those concessions to Frank Justra. She was on the Armed Services Committee. She would not meet with Kazakh officials. Her committee had responsibility for the distribution of funds that were supposed to go to Kazakhstan. She made it clear, no uranium for Justra. You are not going to get your support from the federal government. Um, after Juster got those uranium deposits, he spent, sent $30 million to the Clinton Foundation. What is the timeline on that? Yeah, so that's 2005 is when that deal happens. Within two months, he, spent, he sends the first $30 million to the Clinton Foundation. 2007, they do what's called a reverse merger. They take those Kazakh assets, they put them in a company called Uranium One. Uranium One acquires uranium assets in the United States. In 2010, the Russian government says, we want to buy Uranium One. That triggers the federal approval of the United States. As the U.S. federal government and the State Department is considering that deal, the chairman of Uranium One, Ian Telfer, sends $2.35 million to the Clinton Foundation through a private foundation. It was never disclosed. It was only discovered by going through Canadian tax records. Bill Clinton gives a half a million dollar speech the month as that approval is going through to a, a company in, in Russia that is involved financially with Uranium One. The ties and the deals go on and on. And let me just add, Sean, by the way, it's about to get a lot more interesting because we know some details about this lobbyist, this, uh, uh, this source that's come forward. His name is William Campbell. He lives in Florida. He was with Cassidy and Associates, which is one of the big lobbying firms in, in D.C., where he lobbied on Russian interests from 2007 to 2008. He then started his own firm, was paid $50,000 a month by the Russians for lobbying. And this is what his contract was for, quote, to improve the media and political environment in the U.S. in respect to the surprise of the Russian uranium products, and quote, to set up meetings in, with U.S. administration officials, members of Congress, and other key opinion elite in Tenex and Russian government officials. So the, this is a very inside guy just, that's coming forward as this whistleblower. Russia, we, we had Putin bad actors in the United States. Mueller was the FBI director. Eric Holder was one of the nine that signed off on the deal, CFIUS deal, um, the committee. Then you've got bribery, extortion, kickbacks, money laundering, and racketeering. Mueller had to know because they had an FBI informant. He had his own personal experience, ended up four years being an informant. Then he got tapes, and then we've got documents, and we got emails and a firsthand account. And that Putin was using all of, breaking all of these laws to get a foothold in the uranium market. And they knew in 2009. 
You're right, Sean. In fact, the purchase of Uranium One was announced by Vladimir Putin himself. It was reported in the Moscow Times, which is an English language publication in Moscow. He personally released the funds to purchase Uranium One in the United States. And look, the argument that the Clinton defenders use is well, there were all these government agencies that were involved in this process. She didn't do it by herself. From the standpoint of bribery, that is irrelevant. If you're a congressman sitting on a committee and a committee votes unanimously for something, but you got paid to vote for that, it doesn't matter what your colleagues did. You committed bribery, yeah. and that's why this needs to be investigated. All right, Peter, we're going to stay on this. And by the way, the FBI informant I was just talking about, his name was revealed today. We have John Solomon, Sarah Carter coming. There are two things you don't sell to the Russians, plutonium and uranium, and I think everybody understands why. They're you know the basis is, of nuclear weapons. You know what else is so disturbing about this? Is that it went through at record speed faster than any other deal oh, yeah. went through. And right you after Bill Clinton went over to Kazakhstan and was involved, apparently in some of the negotiations underlying the uranium sale, Ooh. and then received half a million dollars for a speech uh, immediately thereafter from the Russians. You know, there's a part of me, Greg, that says, you know, you never want to be in a situation where as a country you're going back and you're relitigating things that, that happened in the past because then you turn into, well, you know, Brazil. No, right? you must but, do so but, as long as the statute of limitations hasn't run it, and it yeah. has not. This appears to be uh, the politicization of the Justice Department and our justice system. Uh, this... The Uranium One story has been debunked countless times. This is such an abuse of power, and it goes right at the rule of law. So there's Hillary Clinton now firing back at President Trump's suggestion that a special counsel is needed to investigate her role in this controversial Uranium One deal, which was approved when she was Secretary of State. Carl Rowe, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff, President George W. Bush, and a Fox News contributor. How you doing, my friend? And good morning to you. The, uh, the opinions run the spectrum here. What is your opinion on whether or not a special counsel is needed? Let's start there, Carl. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think it's uh, it, both the president and Hillary Clinton would be better off saying less. The president made a mistake saying the saddest thing is he can't interfere with the FBI and the Justice Department. We don't want presidents interfering in the Justice Department or the FBI. Hillary Clinton is wrong. There are serious questions about the Uranium One deal, and, and there's a lot of information out there, some of it accurate, some of it inaccurate. I hope that they don't appoint a special prosecutor unless they, unless the attorney general examines the situation, examines the statute, and finds that the very high threshold uh, for a special prosecutor is justified. Very, very uh, interesting. If they need, they, yeah, Trey, if they need to investigate, if they need to investigate, better to do it through the regular main justice rather than appointing a special prosecutor. I apologize for the interruption. That's basically what Trey Gowdy said yesterday on our show. He said it doesn't meet the threshold, but that doesn't mean that attorneys cannot be looking into it already. Sure, a special, absolutely. Special counsel is a different matter. And that letter that came out from the Department of Justice on Monday night suggesting some prosecutors would look at it, that, that, that's on one side of the argument. The other side is folks like PolitiFact have said there is no sign of collusion there. There is no sign or evidence of quid pro quo. Now, can well, you look, prove look, otherwise? Well, I, I can't prove otherwise, but I can tell you this. Hillary Clinton is misleading people when she says she played no role in the decision. Under the statute, which is available online, anybody could go find the CFIUS statute online, the Secretary of State is a member of the committee. Now, she can delegate to others the, her decision-making authority, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> she has to sign the document. So if she, I think she should have recused herself from this by saying, I can't be involved in this because a generous donor to our foundation may or may not be involved in this, in this decision. But this idea of, oh, I, I didn't have anything to do with this, the law requires her to be one of the 10 members of the CFIUS committee. She can delegate that responsibility to somebody else, but they are acting in her name. So if there was a conflict of interest, she had a responsibility to step up and say, okay. I'm recusing myself and therefore recusing uh, anybody acting in my name for All participating right. in these discussions. I, 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 th well, there'll be more on this, certainly. Uh, yes, two more topics absolutely. quickly. Half a dozen Democrats want to file impeachment proceedings against President Trump. Jonathan Turley says it's crazy. He told Martha this last night. 
So they have no shot at this at the moment because they don't have any evidence to support it. They're seeking to impeach the president for undermining the courts and the press. Uh, those counts are ridiculously overbroad. They could have been used to impeach half the presidents of the United States. I'm not saying Turley's wrong, but I just don't see this going anywhere. Um, I, I, a, I don't either, and Turley's right. If, if impeaching the president over the courts was an issue, then Franklin Delano Roosevelt would have been impeached for his court packing scheme in the 1930s. I mean, this is a ridiculous motion being proposed by backbenchers who are trying to get their names in the press. That this can, is can they raise dangerous. money on it? Well, I suspect some of them have. And jo uh, Stephen, Co uh, the Congressman Cohen from Memphis said, uh, this is about energizing our base. Well, that, uh, thank you. It ought to be about our democracy and our country, not about energizing your base. All right, third topic, last topic here. 26 days until that vote in Alabama. Roy Moore, the Senate seat against Doug Jones, the Democrat. What do you think happens over the next four weeks? It, uh, it, who knows? Uh, two more accusers came forth yesterday. One of them... Uh, is sim uh, her story is similar to the others got picked up in the in the Gaddiston Mall. I mean, this is ugly. Uh, the, the the choice is between a guy who uh, is increasingly not believable on the question of these of these uh, involvement with teenage girls and 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 the instincts of Alabamians, which is uh, we want conservative a conservative senator. I don't know how this gets resolved. I, I think he could win. Doug Jones could win. Uh, there are going to be several more iterations of this, and I think unfortunately. 26 more days of, of controversy about wow. Judge Roy Moore. Sad Thank that he's the you. Republican nominee. Well, we will see what Alabama decides. Thank you, Carl. Carl Rove there Thank in Austin, you. Texas. This appears to be uh, the politicization of the Justice Department and our justice system. Um, this Uranium One story has been debunked countless times. This is such an abuse of power, and it goes right at the rule of law. There's Hillary Clinton now firing back at President Trump's suggestion that a special counsel is needed to investigate her role in this controversial Uranium One deal, which was approved when she was Secretary of State. Carl Rowe, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff, President George W. Bush, and a Fox News contributor. How you doing, my friend? And good morning to you. The, uh, the opinions run the spectrum here. What is your opinion on whether or not a special counsel is needed? Let's start there, Carl. Yeah. Well, first of all, I think it's uh, both the president and Hillary Clinton would be better off saying less. The president made a mistake saying the saddest thing is he can't interfere with the FBI and the Justice Department. We don't want presidents interfering in the Justice Department or the FBI. Hillary Clinton is wrong. There are serious questions about the Uranium One deal. And, and there's a lot of information out there, some of it accurate, some of it inaccurate. I hope that they don't appoint a special prosecutor unless they, unless the attorney general examines the situation, examines the statute, and finds that the very high threshold uh, for a special prosecutor is justified. Very, very uh, interesting. If they need, if they, yeah, Trey if they need to investigate, if they need to investigate, better to do it through the regular main justice rather than appointing a special prosecutor. I apologize for the interruption. That's basically what Trey Gowdy said yesterday on our show. He said it doesn't meet the threshold, but that doesn't mean that attorneys cannot be looking into it already. Sure, but a special, absolutely. Special counsel is a, a different matter. And that letter that came out from the Department of Justice on Monday night suggesting some prosecutors would look at it, that, that, that's on one side of the argument. The other side is folks like PolitiFact have said there is no sign of collusion there. There is no sign or evidence of quid pro quo. Now, can well, you look, prove look, otherwise? Well, I, I can't prove otherwise, but I can tell you this. Hillary Clinton is misleading people when she says she played no role in the decision. Under the statute, which is available online, anybody could go find the CFIA statute online, the Secretary of State is a member of the committee. Now, she can delegate to others the, her decision-making authority, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> she has to sign the document. So if she, I think she should have recused herself from this by saying, I can't be involved in this because a generous donor to our foundation may or may not be involved in this, in this decision. And, but this idea of, oh, I, I didn't have anything to do with this, the law requires her to be one of the 10 members of the CFIUS committee. She can delegate that responsibility to somebody else, but they are acting in her name. So if there was a conflict of interest, she had a responsibility to step up and say, okay. I'm recusing myself and therefore recusing uh, anybody acting in my name for All participating right. in these discussions. Uh, uh, there will well, be more on this, certainly. Uh, yes, two more topics absolutely. quickly. Half a dozen Democrats want to file impeachment proceedings against President Trump. Jonathan Turley says 
It's crazy. He told Martha this last night. They have no shot at this at the moment because they don't have any evidence to support it. They're seeking to impeach the president for undermining the courts and the press. Uh, those counts are ridiculously overbroad. They could have been used to impeach half the presidents of the United States. I'm not saying Turley's wrong, but I just don't see this going anywhere. Um, uh, I, a, I don't either, and Turley's right. If, if impeaching the president over the courts was an issue, then Franklin Delano Roosevelt would have been impeached for his court packing scheme in the 1930s. I mean, this is a ridiculous motion being proposed by backbenchers who are trying to get it, their names in the press. That this can, is can they raise money on it? Well, I suspect some of them have. And uh, Stephen, Co uh, the Congressman Cohen from Memphis, said uh, this is about energizing our base. Well, that, uh, thank you. It ought to be about our democracy in our country, not about energizing your base. All right, third topic, last topic here. Twenty-six days until that vote in Alabama. Roy Moore, the Senate seat against Doug Jones, the Democrat. What do you think happens over the next four weeks? It, uh, it, who knows? Uh, two more accusers came forth yesterday. One of them. Uh, is sim uh, uh, her story is similar to the others she got picked up in the in the Gaddiston Mall. I mean, this is ugly. Uh, the, the the choice is between a guy who uh, is increasingly not believable on the question of these of these uh, involvement with teenage girls and 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 the instincts of Alabamians, which is uh, we want conservative a conservative senator. I don't know how this gets resolved. I, I think he could win. Doug Jones could win. Uh, there are going to be several more iterations of this, and I think unfortunately. 26 more days of, of controversy about no. Judge Roy Moore. Sad Thank that he's the yeah. Republican nominee. Well, we will see what Alabama decides. Thank you, Carl. Carl Rowe there Thank in Austin, you. Texas.